Hi, my name's Lou, and today I'm going to be reading to you from the internet. Why? Well, why not? And today's what is going to be something, you know, I, honestly, I'm trying to bring the show up to a more acceptable level. I've, I've done too many uh, sex things, and I've done too many uh, drug things, and too many just people are stupid things. So I'm going to try to bring, I'm classing it up. I'm classing up the show this week by trying to really be selective about the site that I go to. And so, of course, with almost no hesitation, I'm going to be reading to you from a website by the name of thepoopreport.com. Now, thepoopreport.com is a, a place where people post stories about pooping, but there's actually a forum where... You know, the poopreport.com front page is really like the best stories shared on poopreport.com forums. Uh, so the forums are just full of people, chock full of people sharing stories about pooping and farting and peeing and other bodily functions. It's, it's unbelievably stupid. But you know what? Some people apparently love the pooping. So let's jump right into the poop at poopreport.com, shall we? So the first thread we'll read is in the poopreport.com subforum, the world of poop report subforum poop stories. In a thread by Wendy Miller Zone that she entitled My Prom Poop, and it goes like this. It was my high school prom, and I was just finishing dinner when a strong urge to go to the bathroom made me get up. My friend said, are you okay? And I said, I really need the toilet. And she insisted to come with me because she needed to pee. So we went downstairs where the bathrooms were and every step I took, my cramps got worse. I hate public toilets because my ass is too small to sit down. My friend went in a cubicle and I waited painfully until she came out and said, have you gone? And I just said, I'm sorry for this and ran in as fast as I could. I pulled up my dress and I made the loudest series of explosive farts ever. During all of it, I was moaning and groaning, holding my stomach. 40 minutes later, I flushed the loo and I came out to my friend and I started to cry in embarrassment because she looked round and saw massive diarrhea stains all over my white dress. She gave me her spare t-shirt and shorts. Well, they were hot pants really. Then it was the after party, and I started feeling the second attack coming on. This one felt bad. Very bad. I started having huge cramps, and then I felt massive amounts of air drop into my low intestine. I then began farting violently, and no matter how much I squeezed my cheeks to close them, they just kept coming out. I was now heading for the bathroom. When I got there, I saw a line waiting for it. I said, how long have you been waiting for? And the guy said, well, like forever. So with my hands on my bottom, I said, but I need to go now. Then I was farting loudly again and everyone looked. I moaned, ooh, and that's when the diarrhea began. <laughs> Fuck. And that is when the diarrhea began to gush out of me. The hot pants were less than a foot long and they had completely gone brown. I then rushed out and exploded in a public bin. I was on it for two hours, and the shorts shrunk so I couldn't put them back on. I walked home in a thong in a t-shirt in the night. The next story from the Poop Stories subforum is by a forum member by the name of Eddie Abandon, and he writes in a thread he entitled, Coney Island Poop Hell. During the 4th of July, a few years back, I was in New York for a week with 100% free time and $1,000. After my flight from San Francisco International arrived, I tried to sleep in the hotel lobby. I was a day early and couldn't be let into my reserved spot yet. It was a hot, muggy morning. My laptop bag on my shoulder, my ever watchful eye, and my large wardrobe bag, there was nothing I could do until places opened up in the morning. So I went outside and had some cashews with a down-on-his-luck drifter, splitting a four-ounce bag equally. There was a bunk available for me at ten that morning, so I went up, unpacked, cleaned up, and took off to see the town. I spent the long day wandering around Central Park and Spanish Harlem in addition to riding trains to the great museums. I walked several miles and grew fatigued enough to sleep through a placidly uneventful night. I awoke driven to do something different the next day. I started off on the number one red train on the 4th of July to ride the cyclone and to see the sights at Coney Island as long ago planned. It turned out to be a trip I will never forget. 
I tried to diagnose the Salmonella squadron attacking my butt. I didn't eat on the flight, so it wasn't fallout from runny eggs or staff. My food since landing was about two and a half ounces of dollar store cashew nuts, and since my only cup of coffee since landing had been pretty weak by my standards, I began to wonder if maybe some sickness was on the hands of the guy I shared those nuts with. He wasn't visibly jit prone though. Maybe it was the West Nile virus. All I knew on that long train ride to Coney Island, outer Brooklyn, from the Columbia University stop was that I had to find a toilet now. I was only halfway to Coney Island on the number two red line when it hit me. You know, the live wriggling eels in my digestive tract feeling. Audible percussive sounds portraying the classic salmonella-like diarrhea. This was an absurd and cruel act by God. I had not drunk booze, smoked much, abused coffee, or any other stool motivators. Something wanted to emerge from my gasket all the same. What was it then? Too late to turn back. I decided to tighten up and bear with the next 45 minutes until the station leading to Funland came up. I am a shameful shitter, but measure myself as otherwise normal in all other departments. In this scenario, the shame seemed justified, as New York had welcomed me, asked for no excessive tithes or uncomfortable situations, and I was going to shit all over it. Or am I being excessively anal? <laughs> I hobbled off the train, went up the escalator, and looked for a restroom in the subway station. Traversing the darkened scene added to my primal fear of soiling myself. As I continued the compression effort while walking, nowhere in the vicinity did I see a restroom. I practiced some form of hitherto unperformed Pilates, walking into the light of day onto a broad, car-free residential neighborhood. I considered squatting in an alley and letting loose the russet tide. But again, fear held me back. After what felt like an alpine hike, the first thing I saw consistent with the hospitable toilet possibilities was the New York Aquarium. At this point, my discomfort was so great that phosphines were distorting my vision. Though it was about 1 p.m., it looked like dusk. Rectal fatigue was spreading throughout my body. If I made it to the toilet, an ocean of water would be required to fumigate the stink. The lines to purchase a ticket were 60 people long. My internal mental quibbles erased any possibility of an attempt to walk to the head of the line to ask an employee to directly use the restroom. I knew they would know the state of my bowels, and this would expose my ignominy to one of my New York hosts. The microseconds standing in place were complementary to the squinting of my sphincter, but each jostle forward when someone got into the aquarium was an Olympic grapple with the unctuous brown fate. But I would let the crap kill me through the reuptake of toxin before I let it hit my drawers. This went on for 20 minutes. I'll cut the details short, Herculean as these efforts may have been. The best spent 20 bucks of my life, purchased a ticket to the aquarium. I walked unsteadily into the aquarium and asked at the front counter for precise directions to the bathroom. I did my business with an audience of only one present. When I was done, I took a brown paper hand towel and loaded a dime of pink liquid bathroom soap to apply to my distended back door as a scent masking ruse. I quickly evacuated the scene to get a little bit more from my $20 aquarium ticket purchase and some fresh air. Though it was not a good day for me at the aquarium, I was feeling paranoid about my biological holocaust at the fish facility's men's room. I guess you could call it survivor's guilt. I was physically effervescent at this point, so I made my headway to the midway. For future Coney Island visitors, directly across from the outdoor pavilion of the aquarium is an entrance to the boardwalk encircling Coney Island. Brazenly, I stepped up to the first ride I saw with my new relaxed state of being. Sweet synchronicity. There it was. The first freaking ride I approached was a chamber of horrors. Not any chamber of horrors, though, because in front of it was a gruesome sight, because there in front of the raised track was a pneumatic sculpture of a six-foot plinth. And on this plinth was a plexiglass case, and in this case was a life-size diorama of a bathroom with a toilet. And on this toilet was a man repeating the same tortured bowel movement again and again. His bathroom was splattered with poop. The audio loop masked the visual significance, replacing it with this emetic sound. But this was a monument to Montezuma's revenge. All rides, in fact everything else, was anticlimactic that day. The scene was washed out like an old postcard. Even the gentle lapping of the waves against the sand was muffled for me by my lambasted ego. My poop gauntlet was for naught. In the repetition of the act on stage, I realized the eternal reoccurrence of the same I had witnessed was like a thunderbolt of Zeus in my eyes. It popped my cherry. I will hereby forever recognize the ultimate luxury of convenient bathroom access. And Daphne writes, Hey, I'll just toss this into the queue now, meaning that they're going to put it on the front page. 
Welcome aboard, Eddie. How's your butt? And Eddie replies, Thank you for the greeting, Daphne. My butt, it is a problem. My butt is a little bit convex for my tastes and way too hairy. I hope this doesn't come off as resoundingly negative. I am allowed to cover my posterior in black pants every day. It's just... My butt is usually a little bit flared up for my psychological and physical comfort. Maybe too because I'm only 31. Vacations are when I tend to walk it off, hemorrhoidally speaking. I consume smaller quantities and walk quite a lot. Then I feel the smooth texture of my inner eyelid returning. My butt is relatively healthy for about two weeks before work comes down on me and the hemorrhoids greet me again. I hope I'm not being narcissistic going on and on about mine. How's your butt? Prairie Doggin replies, It may be just me, but I can't hear enough about hemorrhoids. As long as they're on someone else's ass. Prairie Dog. <laughs> Prairie Doggin adds again, On my one and only over-the-road trip, I thought what I had was a hemorrhoid. I slathered so much Preparation H on it. By the time I got to Illinois, there was more glop back there than actual ass. It turns out I had a poloidinal cyst. To make matters worse, I got snagged for overweight. Oh, he's a trucker. <laughs> okay. I got, to make matters worse, I got snagged for overweight and came within an hour of spending the night in Cook County Jail. Imagine the horror of arriving in jail pre-lubed Ugh, fucking puke <laughs> anyway and daphne replies to eddie abandon who asked about her butt to say hey eddie white and a little like jello currently in a pair of lounge flannels i'm going commando today well not enough sharing i say no oh, wait too much sharing i've got those words mixed up all right and then in the next wonderful thread about poop in the poop story subforum Fecal Man writes in a thread he entitled, Do you poop much at your workplace? And it starts like this. Of course there are occasions when we all need to take a dump at work, but for me, I try to avoid it. The staff toilet in my work is disgusting. On the actual toilet seat, there is all of this scum on the actual seat, especially where your tailbone would be. Anytime I do take a crap at work, I have to place individual sheets of toilet paper down on the seat because I can't bear the thought of sitting on the grimy thing. I'm sometimes surprised that it all goes down when I come to flush. I was just wondering what the toilets were like at your workplace. Do you guys have any individual stalls or like a room where you can just lock yourself in and relax? And Wonderpants writes, I actually do most of my pooping at work because I tend to do most of my pooping in the first part of the day. I can't really complain too much about my work bathroom. It has lots of room, doesn't stink, good TP, some kind of fan or something that muffles some of the pooping sounds. All in all, not a bad place to poop. And Miss Mad Crapper replies, I am forced to shit at my job every single day. But the bitch that keeps clean around here keeps it pretty nice, so I can't complain. If she would only stop spending so much time farting around on that damn poop website, maybe she could get around to putting out some better magazines or some shit. Jeez. Deja Poo replies, The crappers at my office are very nice. They're spacious. The cleaning crew keeps them cleaned and well stocked. The plumbing all works wonderfully. We have full-length mirrors behind the red granite countertops for the sinks. Oh, yeah. We're shitting in the lap of luxury at my place of employ. And Fecal Man replies, Wow, you guys are very lucky to have such nice-sounding toilets. The ones at my work are awful. They don't even have a window. The toilet paper is this really cheap stuff with dimples on it, and it's really quite rough on both sides. It cuts the arse off you if you wipe too hard. And RoboCrap13 adds, I hate to poop at work. Because I work in a restaurant and there's no employee crapper. You peel the paint and everyone knows who it was. The funny thing is that one of my coworkers likes to have lots of liquid bread, aka beer, on Saturday nights. This makes his shit stink. One day, I watched a customer approach the men's room after JT had been in there. The guy stopped dead in his tracks, turned around and shuffled back to his table trying to cork it in or tie a knot. And Miss Mad Crapper adds again, I hated crapping at McHell when I worked there too, Robo. Would it kill these restaurants to install an employee shitter? We had this one douche that worked for us named Jeff, and he had a habit of dumping containers of dehydrated onions on other workers when they were in there shitting. I came up behind him and punched him in the kidney once because I was sick of his shit. He said he pissed blood for two days after that. I'm certainly surprised I never got fired from there. Poopsie McGee replies, I am one of the noble savages, sometimes referred to as a stay-at-home mom, or as I prefer to say, housewife. I like to say housewife because I much prefer my wifely duties to my motherly ones. Anyway, I have the luxury of pooping in my own bathroom. I must say, it's fucking immaculate in there because I am an anal-retentive neat freak and keep my home spotless. 
I wouldn't be a good little housefrau if I wasn't cleaning the joint. Back in the olden days, when I actually had a job that gave me a real paycheck lunch breaks and at least the promise of a retirement fund, I worked for a newspaper which had the most vile and revolting shitters I have ever had the misfortune to be in. I'm sure a lot of you have seen train spotting. Yeah, well, the dungeon in that movie is like the bathroom in a four-star hotel compared to the newspapers. No one ever cleaned it. And I mean ever. It would have taken a chisel and rock hammer to even begin whittling away at the filth kicked on over the years. Donkey Farts adds, We have a whole bunch of us packed into a tiny portable office trailer with the bathroom at one end. The tiny door is practically made of paper and the fan is broke. This means that not only can everyone hear everyone else dump, but once the door is open, everyone has to smell everyone else's thick cloud of stench. Once you hear someone sitting in there pushing and farting, once you hear someone sitting in there pushing and farting, you know you're going to have to marinate and stink for the next 20 minutes. At least you get a warning. Of course, I'm the guy who tries to hold in my dumps at home just so I can do all my shitting at work and stink everyone else out. I'm starting to get the feeling my boss and coworkers are doing the same thing. It's like a contest to see who can get the most complaints. And finally in this thread, Drizzly's ads. I went from working in a nice, newish university building to working in one of those hundred-year-old houses that hold a single department. The bathroom on my floor is basically the same as it was when the place was built, including a bathtub and a sink with separate hot and cold spigots, and a century of iron and mineral stains in the sink bowl. As there are only three of us regularly up here, we get to know who the last shitter was. The lady up here rips the worst ass I've ever smelled, and she leaves little floaters when she's done. For goodness sake! Look down when you're done and flush again if once didn't do the trick. Often in summer, the ass stank wafts throughout the floor. I find myself crapping here almost every morning. A cup of hot chocolate usually gets things moving. No fan, so I crank up the cold water to at least provide some noise cover, though that just makes it sound like I'm pissing all over the place. Normally, I would prefer this to crapping at home since workplace toilets always seem to be more robust. But home and work are reversed. We have an industrial strength tankless toilet at home and a standard tank toilet at work. My fears of a log clog at work resurface with each flush. A log clog. Oh, drizzlies. How adorable. And this goes on for five pages. So if you want to read more stories of do you poop much at your workplace, stop in at Poop Reports. And not to just make you think that Poop Report is just talk about pooping. It's also informative. As I found out when I went to the subforum called Ask Poo Nurse, in which people ask questions of Poo Nurse who reassures them about the okayness of how they're going to the bathroom. And in one such question, Vegetarian Pooper asked, Why do I fart so much when I have to poo? And it goes, A little something like this. This is embarrassing. But every night, my usual poop time is between 10 p.m. and 11.50 p.m. A few minutes before I even get to the bathroom, I fart a lot. And I mean a lot. Then the gas smells just like poop. Then I fart when I am pooping, and after I flush my solid waste, I don't fart at all. So why does this happen? And Thunderbox replies, it's just a natural alarm call. My alarm is incredibly loud. And Chief Thunderbutt adds, farts are just the propulsion devices that our body uses to launch our brown torpedoes. Once the tube has been cleared, they have no practical use. And C. Everett Poop replies, a fart is a cry for help from an imprisoned turd. And Robocrap adds the last reply. Old joke, CEP, but I agree with you. I can tell from the type of farts I have what my movement will be like. Full-winded and dry means a nice, tightly formed stool with no problems of passage. And at the other end of the scale, the shart. See, well, I think we've all learned something there. And again in the Ask Poo Nurse threads, Vegetarian Pooper asks again, because Vegetarian Pooper is obviously very unsure of their rear end in a thread they entitled how much poop coming out at once is normal and it goes like this i just got done pooping and i lost two pounds i get on the scale every night when i am done pooping and i was wondering how much poop comes out of most people's butts el scumbag replies of all you consume daily about a third comes out as poo remember also that a poo can have a high water content usually which can also affect its weight if you eat six pounds of food daily a two-pound poo is about right. <laughs> if it all comes out at once, which that doesn't make any sense. Anyway, Prairie Doggin replies, Since you were wondering, how did you weigh the poop? Did you retrace your steps and shovel it up? Foxy Lady replies, I'm always eating large amounts of food, so I'm always pooping large amounts of poop, sometimes several times a day. 
It's easy for me to lose more than a pound or two while I take a dump. And Prairie Dog replies, I'm just curious, are you a vegetarian? Veggies bulk you up and make them look much bigger while not necessarily heavier. I'm the opposite. I'll eat anything with legs except a table. My poops are so dense that they weigh more than a small planet. And Daphne replies, you know, I eat a great deal of salad, but I take the biggest mega dumps when I've eaten Taco Bell. Seriously. Sitting Pretty replies, I have been eating a lot of chicken on butter lettuce, and last weekend I got the cramps for a blowout of lettuce and poop. It was mostly lettuce. I feel so good when I unload my whole colon. It's just that it doesn't happen very often. Taco Bell gives me stomach aches, so I don't eat it. And then sadly, that thread becomes derailed by some strained conversation about goths. So, we'll move on from there. I don't know about you guys, but I'm learning so very much right here in my apartment. That I, I mean, it's just, uh, I'm, I'm, it's blowing my mind. And finally, in the Ask Poo Nurse thread, although certainly I could plumb the depths of Poo Nurse forever, Shit Volcano asks in a thread he entitled, why do I wipe so much? I used to have a major problem when I was younger with what I call a million wiper. I think you know what I'm talking about. You wipe and you wipe, and you just can't seem to get clean. Finally, after using half a roll of toilet paper, three million wet wipes, and washing your bunghole out in the sink, you leave with a sore, itchy ass. This went on for years, until one day about two years ago, when it suddenly stopped cold. What causes million wipers in the first place? And why would they suddenly stop and start happening at random? Note, I stopped eating red meat two years ago because of iron toxicity, if I spelled it right. Maybe this had something to do with it, but I don't know how. And Poo Nurse replies, it's in the first actual incidence of Poo Nurse replying, Hi, shit volcano! Your instincts are, as always, right on. The major cause of sticky poo, and thus the need to wipe more, is the grease and fats in the poo. This is probably well documented somewhere, but frankly, I don't have the time to look into it. Curiously enough, though, if you lean forward when pinching it off, you may notice very little, if anything, to wipe. Thanks for asking. Poo nurse. And finally, I know everyone is dying to hear more poop stories and talk, but uh, I'm going to have to finish up with this one and let you explore the poop forum yourself. So finally, in the general poop subforum of the World of Poop Report, Mr. Poops Three Times Per Day writes a thread he entitled, At age 48, I may have just changed my butt wiping strategy. And it goes like this. Wow. This is all started a couple years ago or so. On another forum, somehow it came up that I'm a standing wiper, and a few people were mind-boggled that I would do that, because they never heard of that method and said I was some kind of freak. They always assumed the whole world was made of sitting wipers. Conversely, I had never in my life heard of a sitting wiper. We were both similarly mind-boggled. A few people came to my defense and said I was normal. I then came to this forum, and in fact, that thread is one of the ones that made me come here. Somebody in that thread told me that Poop Reports was the poop forum of all poop forums. I discovered here that the world is roughly split 50-50 between these two methods. I also read from the sitting wipers why it's superior, and they suggested I try it. I did so, and quickly gave up because it was too hard. I did what they told me, shift my weight to one side and reach from the side under one thigh to access the bunghole. I think it causes too much strain on the thigh muscles, so it just isn't worth it. As it turns out, my wife is a sitting wiper, but I'd never observed her wipe. But for a while, I've seen my son wipe, and I am always chucked up at this strange method to his autistic behavior. But I'm pretty sure my wife taught him to wipe like that, and it just yesterday occurred to me that his method might be a good way to be a sitting wiper without the strain on one's thighs. What he does is spread his legs open, then reach between them straight back to his poop hole and wipes it all in a sitting position. I just tried this today twice, in fact, as I've pooped at least twice today so far. I feel clumsy because I'm 48, and all my life I've been a standing wiper, but it's easy on my thighs, and I admit it, it seems like it does a more thorough job, with less toilet paper than when I do it standing. I leave the bathroom maybe even feeling cleaner, and I've done so with less toilet paper. In addition, many restrooms, including the one where I work, have installed their toilet paper holders at a sitting position and have receptacles where you have to reach up from below to access the toilet paper. I've always hated this because it makes it fairly difficult for standing wipers to get to it. The new method my son just taught me, he doesn't know he taught it to me, 
has the fringe benefit of making it easier for me to deal with these inconveniently designed receptacles. Like I said, I feel clumsy doing it, but I've only done it once or twice, but I've only done it twice versus tens of thousands of times wiping while standing. So I have a feeling that if I stick with it, I'll get used to this new method of wiping. It's hard to believe I could have discovered something so basic only after having reached the age of 48 years old. By the way, there is one small disadvantage to this method. I invariably wind up having my hand slash wrist come in contact with the genital areas in the process, and there might be a drop or two of urine that gets on me when I do that. I feel this is not too big a deal, since I always wash my hands afterwards anyhow. Chief Thunderbutt replies, I was a sitting wiper until the age of 30-something. I converted to standing wiper because of the bathroom in a house I lived in was so small there was no room for leaning to the side. After a few months, I was a confirmed stander and have been so until this day. I never tried reaching in from the front because it sounds like a good way to get fudge-smeared knackers. And uh, Mr. Poops three times per day replies again. I'll continue to evaluate this method, especially in the era of fudge-smearing. So far, I don't think it's happened. It doesn't seem like it's that hard to retrieve the poop sludge without touching the package. But as I poop several times a day, time should quickly tell me if it's something that's going to happen or not. If I need to go back to my standing wiping, I suspect it's like bicycle riding, something you never forget how to do. One other point. Since this is new to me, I still have doubt in my mind as to whether I've actually wiped the whole crime scene or not. I'm not used to feeling around the output orifice from the position or vantage point and knowing exactly where the boundaries of the guilty region are, so when I stand up, I do one more small wipe just to make sure. The first time, I had just a small amount of missed brownage. The second time, I was more careful to wipe around the slightly larger area, and it seemed to work perfectly. During the training period, I suppose I'll continue to do this testing and verification procedure. If I become satisfied that I'm doing it thoroughly and correctly and gain enough practice that it starts coming naturally and I have the confidence through enough trials that I indeed am wiping out all the chocolate sewage, then I should think I could stop at the final standing test wipe and rely solely on the sitting procedure. And Mighty Dickerson adds, I had never even heard of wiping while seated until I found this site. I've always been and always will be a standing wiper. In order to wipe while seated, my hand would have to go inside the bowl, and that just ain't happening. Okay, well, that is going to have to do it for the poopreport.com or just poopreport.com if you want to be technical about it. A wonderful place to go and read about poop poop-related things, meet fellow poop lovers, whatever you want to do that has poop in the title. I have to give it to these people. They have some very wonderful euphemisms for poop and going to the bathroom. But I guess if they just said poop only all the time. Although I guess they do say poop a lot. Anyway, uh, one another thing to note about this website is that it is not heavily trafficked. A lot of these posts are several years old, but there is some current activity on the poop report, so don't feel like it's a dead site. It's not dead. I hope you enjoyed listening to Lou Reed's poopreport.com. I know I enjoyed reading it. Uh, it was pretty dumb, but uh, really, what were you expecting? Or what was I expecting? I knew what I was getting into. Anyway, thanks for everyone for uh, appreciating the magnets for the few people who did get magnets. I enjoyed sending them to you all over the globe. Australia, I think. England, Texas, Texas Madison, Wisconsin, somewhere in New Jersey. Vermont, all these bastions of people who like to listen to ridiculous things read to them from the internet, and I appreciate it. I wanted to apologize for the, yet again, the lack of constant updates. I've had some major technological problems with my DigiDesign M-Box, which I used to record, and uh, somehow I lost some important paperwork for it, and Avid wants to charge you $2.50 a minute to talk to a support person, which is an absurd amount of money. Um, but I'm working on it, and luckily, I thank the people at the journalism school at Columbia University for lending me this little replacement box in the meantime while I uh, iron out or fixing the other one, and uh, so on and so forth. And thanks for everyone who's been sending me suggestions for other things to read. I do plan on reading the Sneeze Fetish Forum sometime soon, and uh, a bunch of other really dumb shit. <laughs> Um, so, as always, here comes the part where I plea, I beg you to go to iTunes and rate the show positively and tell all your friends and leave recordings of it playing when people are around and say, like, what's this playing? Well, oh, I don't know. Sounds great. Let's listen to it. Um, this is a, a fantasy that I have that, that you're doing. Um, 
I know it's not likely, but that's why it's a fantasy. And there's no nudity. Nothing is happening between us when that's happening. Unless, I mean, that could be your part of the fantasy. That you, that me, and we, the nudity. Thanks again for listening to Lou Reads. I appreciate it more than you know. Uh, should I make a t-shirt? No, you wouldn't wear a t-shirt that had anything to do with me. But maybe a coffee cup. Put, go to the Facebook fan page or uh, or leave a comment on the site. Or send me. There's a contact thing I put on LouReads.com. So you can actually send me a, a comment to the content thing. And I'll get it as an email. And you don't have to. Or you can email me at LouReads at gmail.com. So many ways to, to reach out and touch me digitally. Please don't touch me in person. I have a thing about that. So thanks again. The third or fourth thanks. For listening to Lou Reads, my name is Lou, and I have been reading the internet for you. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye.